Shalom. In the previous video, we laid the foundation for Boolean algebra by providing a bit of history and defining key terms like literal and expression. Over the next few videos, we will apply those terms to learn the mechanics of working with Boolean values and variables, which will ultimately lead to expressing and simplifying complex logic in a consistent mathematical form. Specifically, in this video, we will define Boolean algebra laws and order of operations. First, the order of operations. This is similar to PEMDAS, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that you may know from numeric algebra. But it actually is simpler because there are only four operators, and those operators are evaluated in this order, parentheses, inverting, anding, and finally, oring. This example shows each operator in action. Given this expression with logic values, we need to identify which operation to perform first. According to the order of operations, first is whatever is inside the parentheses, which here is zero or zero. False or false produces a false, so a zero is written on the next line. Now that there are no more operations within parentheses, we must choose what to do next from OR, AND, and NOT. NOT comes next, so 0 prime produces a 1, which is written on the next line. The next operation on the list is AND, so we perform TRUE AND TRUE, which produces TRUE. Thus, this 1 on the next line. Finally, the only operation left is FALSE OR TRUE, which produces true. Now the simplification is complete. On this slide, we define the three foundational laws of Boolean algebra, the commutative law, associative law, and distributive law. You may notice these are written identically to what you would see in numeric algebra. The commutative law shows that the order of variables does not matter, whether ORing or ANDing x or y is identical to y or x. This makes sense when we put logic into words. If your mom says she will make you pizza or tofu, it would mean the same as if she said tofu or pizza. Similarly, x and y is identical to y and x. The associative law shows that when the same operation is performed across more than two variables, it does not matter which variables are operated on first. This applies to both ORing and ANDing. For example, with X or Y or Z, we could first do X or Y, then OR that result with Z. Alternatively, we could first do Y or Z, then OR that result with X. Either way, the same logic value will be produced at the end. The distributive law shows how we can work with parentheses in the case where an OR result is then ANDed with another term. Here we see Y OR Z is done first and then is ANDed with X. This will produce the same logic value as ANDing X with each other variable individually and then ORing the results. Working left to right is called distributing because the X is distributed to both the Y and the Z. Oftentimes, we want to work in the other direction. This is called factoring because we identify a common factor between multiple terms and pull it out. Side note, in every example on this page, the middle dot is used to explicitly identify the AND operation. This won't always be the case. Oftentimes, two variables are simply written next to each other. This implies the AND operation. So, for example, this bottom expression could also be written as XY or XZ. There are a couple of ways we can prove these laws. An approach that can be done in Boolean algebra, but not in numeric algebra, is proof via truth tables. Recall that a truth table requires writing the output for every possible input combination. 
if two expressions are shown to have the same output for every possible input combination, then they are equivalent. In other words, this equation will be true if the left side and the right side have the exact same output column in the truth table. So let's prove the associative law of addition. The first operation on the left side is x or y, so that expression gets its own column. Whenever x and y are both false, the result is false, so zeros are written up here. But in every other case, at least one of x and y are true, which means that the result is true. So ones are written the rest of the way down. In the next column, we see x or y or z. To evaluate this, ignore the x and y columns and focus purely on the z column and the x or y column. In the top row, both of these columns are zero, so false or false produces a false. In all the remaining rows, at least one of the columns is true, so the result is true. This column marks the completion of the left side of the given equation, so now we turn our focus to the right side. In a similar manner, we start with a column for the first operation, y or z. After that, we focus on the x column and the y or z column, or together each row, and obtain this final column. Now we can compare the results of the left side and the right side. We see that in every single row, there is a match. There is a zero at the top and ones the rest of the way down. If any row differed from each other, then this equation would not be true. But as is, this is proof of the associative law of addition. On this slide, a similar approach is shown to prove the distributive law. Every possible set of input combinations is written to start the table. Then, the left side of the equation is evaluated, following the order of operations. Next, the right side of the equation is evaluated, again, following the order of operations. Note that here, three columns are necessary because there are two ands and one or. Once the table is complete, we see that the expressions on the left side and the right side produce the exact same sequence of zeros and ones. Therefore, the distributive law with three variables is proved true. You can certainly apply the same method to prove the other laws of Boolean algebra. These proofs are nice. They give us confidence in the laws. But now that we have that confidence, the key thing to remember is what those laws are. They may seem abstract now and difficult to remember, but you will get plenty of practice working with various Boolean equations, which will make these laws second nature to you.